we must be a people that will be intentional about how we live amen the bible says about king jotham uh, so jotham prepared his ways amen he prepared his ways before the lord we'll talk about that next week but there is a preparation there is a plan it's not life came life went i went along with the tide amen come on amen no man something amen there is a a, a way we do our life as believers amen everything that comes does not have to come and hit us amen we have to be intentional how am i going to live my life ek ek zid hota hai ki mujhe zindagi kaisa jeena hai amen and so i will be intentional about my sunday morning worship i will be intentional about serving god's people i will be intentional about my tithes and my offering i will be intentional about a uh, 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 serving in the house of god amen. amen we don't just just do life chalo aaj koi nahi hai to main kar liya you know uh, if nobody is there i will do it if everybody is there somebody else will do it no that's not how we do life that's not how we do our christian living Amen. We must be a people that is intentional about everything that God brings into our lives. Are you with me? Amen. And so today I want to talk to you about one of the keys of walking with Jesus. Amen. And that is intentional encouragement for want of a better title. Amen. And what do I mean by that? We must be a people that encourage others intentionally. if you if you don't hear the rest of the message this is what is the gist of the message amen we must be a people that are intentional about encouraging everybody that god brings into our sphere of influence hallelujah this has to be our our goal our primary focus as we walk with jesus yes we must fast we must pray we must do all those things that's ministering unto the lord but we also have a ministry towards people come on amen there is a ministry unto the lord and out of that ministry unto the lord there is a ministry that flows out of us towards people hallelujah so you have intentional encouragement you have purposeful living you have to be a people who will be intentional can we say intentional intentional hallelujah and so you know um, i i want to start with this this one story this is really not my style but i'm going to do this anyways can we go to the next slide you know in in the in in the late 1960s there was this this very very popular rock star called bruce springsteen amen uh, many of you will not know of him but this is back in the days Uh, Bruce Springsteen used to be one of the most influential voices in the rock music scenario. People adored him. People admired his songs. They were they were very appreciative of the you know the deep bass voice that he had. But it was not the same all along. Bruce Springsteen was a man who was frustrated, who was exhausted, who had done many 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 auditions and he had been rejected by many music companies. So much so that he came to a place in his life where he decided to sing in clubs. Are you with me? And in in one such time he was he was singing at a place called Asbury Park. Even Asbury is now famous again because of the revival. But he was singing at a place called Asbury Park, and uh, as he was singing out there, totally disappointed with himself, dejected, feeling let down because his voice was not being appreciated. As he was singing out there, there walked a man into that bar by the name of Mike Apple. That's the the next guy sitting out there. Amen. Mike Apple was a talent hunter and mike apple happened to hear this man's voice at the end of the uh, the evening mike apple walked up to him and uh, just you know two minutes of conversation being a talent hunter he knew how where this man was in terms of his his mental state in terms of his heart he knew exactly how dejected this man was and mike apple 
try to encourage him and push him forward to keep trying to sing came to a place where mike apple finally signed him on took him on and the two of them together created history in the following years some of the most famous most popular uh, i think uh, you know my generation will know born in the usa and all those songs some of the most popular songs this amazing talent this man he sang he was one of the most unpretentious just a simple white shirt and denims kind of a singer where the rest of the world would be you know doing all kinds of stunts but mike apple and this man bruce springsteen together they created some platinum records one after the other after the other to the extent that their the the very lifestyle of these people changed are you with me where did it all all begin who was the hero was it bruce springsteen or was it mike apple both of them were equally important to the story are you with me mike you know uh, bruce springsteen has gone on record and said if it was not for this man if it was not for this man i would still be singing in a bar if it was and you can you can spot that as a as a story in the lives of many many musicians many musicians there is yesterday i was watching on youtube i was watching uh, this one guy who uh, who was you know a long jump uh, he was a long jump athlete from usa and uh, this 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 guy i mean he looks like a scrawny kid but he went on in i think it was again 1968 or something when he competed in the olympics around that time and uh, the previous world record had not been broken for more than 25 years and if the world record was ever broken it was by 1 inch 2 inch half an inch that is how the world records were broken and this guy he goes for his first run everyone's expecting him to win or else it has to be the russian okay there are two guys who are competing for this contest and he is he is he is running and as he runs he overshoots his mark second run again he runs he overshoots his mark now the pressure is totally on him scared upset doesn't know what to do and his coach who was a previous record winner a uh, uh, medal winner goes up to him and tells him jump 2 inches behind take off from 2 inches behind your legs are in the best shape that they have ever been just in your mind focus on flying that's what he says i mean think about it that that jump was called the flight amen this guy takes off from 2 inches behind and you know they have these electronic devices with which they measure when he finishes his jump the the electronic measure cannot even measure because he's jumped that much ahead of the world record the man broke the world record by two and a half feet approximately two and a half feet that's a lot what am i trying to say who was the hero of that story both of them i mean one did the action the other uh, uh, spoke into his life and for each one of us beloved as and this is these are stories from the world how much more in the body of christ Amen. am i making sense to you yes. and so you know in our lives many of us we come to this place where we are we have tried investing into people we have lived you know relationships and we have done so many things for others that we are we have come to a place of hurt we've invested and we have been hurt can we go to that next slide we have invested and we have got hurt and we come to a place where we are cynical what is cynical cynical is believing that people are motivated only by their self interest and they cannot be trusted or another definition on 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 uh, you know on google was it's when someone is concerned only with their own interest and we come to this place where we don't want to invest into anybody 
we come to this place where we we walk with somebody and it comes to that pattern of previous hurt and we walk away are you with me we don't want to we don't want to get hurt again once bitten twice shy and so what do we do we walk away and yet you see just to guard ourselves while we walk away we keep our friendships at a safe distance we we go through our past hurts we relive those hurts and we come to a place where we are away from all of this and yet go to the next slide please and yet this is what jesus says matthew chapter 22 verse 37 to 39 he says you shall love the lord your god with all your heart with all your soul with all your mind amen this is the first of the great commandment and the second is like this you shall love your neighbor as yourself i want i i, I find this uh, uh, passion translation far more interesting where he says jesus answered him and said love the lord your god with every passion of your heart with every energy of your being with every thought that is within you by coming to church on time by sorry uh, verse 38 <laughs> this, verse 38 this is the great and the supreme commandment verse 39 and the second is like it in importance similar to the level of importance same passion same coming on time same all of those you must love your friend in the same way as you love yourself the first thorn that goes into my finger what do i do i quickly all my attention is drawn to that finger I couldn't care if I was on a Zoom call. I couldn't care if I was, you know, giving my examination. I couldn't care if I was doing something very, very important. Everything can stop. Why? There is something that has gone into my finger. Or if a dust particle goes into my eye. I don't care even if the Prime Minister of the country is standing there. Are you with me? Why? Because it is important. That's my love for myself. I don't want to be blind. And Jesus says exactly in the same way that you love yourself you must love others can i ask you a simple question it's a question that i ask myself have you let yourself down ever have you let yourself down ever have you continued to love yourself have i answered the question hallelujah we 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 Put, let ourselves down so many times I think you know for uh, if I don't end up going to the gym I feel let down if I don't manage my diet properly I feel let down if I don't read my Bible for the day if I don't spend the time that I want in prayer that I have planned I feel let down I feel let down if I can't take care of the things that I'm supposed to take care of and yet I can promise you one thing I love myself and I can say that about each one of us. You love yourself. Hallelujah. And here's what Jesus is saying. Jesus is saying that you must love your neighbor. Your friend. The person next to you. More than yourself. Hallelujah. We must love our, our neighbor. What happened? Sunday school shifted. All Sunday school bachcha parties come on out. Hallelujah. And who is your first neighbor? Do you know this? Who is your first neighbor? For all you married people, your first neighbor is your husband or your wife. That's the first neighbor. Hallelujah. And here's what Jesus is saying. He's saying you must love your friend in the same way as you love yourself. Hallelujah. And then, and then he goes on to give you the next de de definition in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 13 verse 7. And it says, love always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Go to the next slide please. Love always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Again, the Passion Translation says, it says, uh, love is a safe place of shelter. Hallelujah. Love is a safe place of shelter, for it never stops believing the best 
for others hallelujah if you love somebody you will put the best in front of the other person hallelujah now love never takes failure as defeat because love never gives up are you with me you are not called to be cynical we can be cynical satan puts in those words oh you will be hurt again oh you will be frustrated so don't do it don't 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 invest so much time with this person don't go and help him so much don't go and you know build up this person because you've been hurt in the past but the one thing that pastoral ministry has taught me over 14 years is that we must continue you continue loving because that is who you are you have been built you are not built to carry resentment you don't have a natural system built into you to carry resentment or bitterness or hatred am i making sense to you am i making sense to you come on you know the the day this hit me the day this this dawned on me i am not built to carry anxiety i have not been created with a system to 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 have bitterness against somebody that is alien that is foreign to me but satan makes it look like that is the best place of safety for me hallelujah and god jesus is saying to us love your neighbor as you love yourself hallelujah and when we become a people that love our neighbors just like we love ourselves amen there are things that god has planned for us amen and so i want to take you today to the story of a man who is not very well known in the bible but i want to use him as an example of how he lived intentionally as someone who would encourage others amen are you with me and so i want us to to look at the story of this man called barnabas can we all say barnabas, barnabas. who is barnabas look at this scripture acts chapter 4 was 36 this is you know the early days when christianity was just exploding onto the scene in the church in jerusalem and you know there was a lot of people coming into the church 3000 people came in one day can you imagine a city and 3000 people suddenly overnight they have come and they have become christians amen and one of them was barnabas hallelujah can we say barnabas and joseph can you imagine this look at me everybody just give me a minute what would it be let's read the scripture and then i'll tell you and joseph who was also named barnabas by the apostles which is translated as the son of encouragement a levite meaning he was he, he was from the priestly family of the country of cyprus was 37 having land sold it and brought the money and laid it at the feet of the apostles I want you to think about this. This man was nicknamed by the apostles as the encourager. Can you think about it? The church has begun and as the church is coming together, as people come and fellowship, as they come and they are ministering to one another, you know what is happening? They spot one person who is encouraging everybody. One person who characteristically and distinctly by his nature is somebody who encourages others and so they say are are chhod we we don't want your name as joseph we are going to call you barnabas from today there are some other names in the bible you know by their characteristic blind bartimeus he was not blind after that day he was never blind but he was still called blind bartimeus the woman with the issue of blood ho gaya but she is still known as the woman with the issue of blood amen but here is a man with a positive name change nobody knows him as joseph if i told you that there was a man called joseph who worked with the apostle paul would you know who he was and yet you see the story that he was a a, a man who encouraged god's people to such an extent that he was called the encourager amen barnabas means you know in in the greek it it means uh, paracletes and uh, or uh, 
parasite which means you know it's the same word that is used for the holy spirit the parakletos what does that mean he comes alongside you and encourages you and comforts you like the holy spirit are you with me comes alongside you as you journey through life encourages you come on you can do it come on i know there is more in you i know you don't need to give up i know that you are frustrated you are feeling defeated but god has a plan for you i know there is more that is in you you are not done yet god is not done with you yet and that is that is that is what this man used to do acts chapter 11 verse 24 i don't have that on my slide says for he was a good man barnabas full of the holy spirit and faith do you see that he was one of the early apostles he was full of faith full of the holy spirit and a great number of people were added that's that's uh, about the church amen he was a a warm positive uplifting you know a man who was able to see the good in others not looking at the faults not cynical saying that guy hurt me so i will not go to that church this guy hurt me so i will now jump from here to there no he was a man who was seeing gold in others amen and and i i want to encourage you today beloved that you and i will become a people that will see gold in others hallelujah i want to ask you a simple question this morning and this is where we want to uh, i'm i'm going to start my message now <laughs> i want to ask you a simple simple question today if the apostles were around in this church what would be your nickname what would be our nicknames it's a question i have i i asked uh, myself what would what would the apostles call me would they call me a barnabas would they see me as an encourager or would they see me as somebody who pulls down other people would they see me as someone who has nothing to say to anybody but can i tell you here's what we are called to do we are called to be a people who will encourage hallelujah the, the story of barnabas is very very interesting let's look at look, look at it a little further uh, uh, let's go into acts chapter 9 verse 26 to 28 and i want you to see this this is so important for us to see this acts chapter 9 verse 26 to 28 you see you know the story of saul's conversion saul was a man who was a uh, uh, you know he was persecuting the christians he got a permit from the from the high priest saying that if anybody is following this jesus you have the permission to persecute them you have the permission to even kill them if need be and so saul went about causing havoc in the body of christ he would go from one place to the other just destroying people destroying churches doing all kinds of evil and in the midst of that one fine day the the lord encounters jesus uh, uh, the uh, the apostle saul amen the lord encounters saul and he says saul saul why do you persecute me hallelujah saul saul why do you persecute me who are you lord and he says i am jesus the christ hallelujah it is hard for you to kick against the goats amen it's hard for you to kick against a cement bag and not come out of it injured without being injured are you with me hallelujah and you know the story the way he 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 is blinded and then he is sent to a particular place where he goes and he sits and he is sitting there and he is praying and as he is praying the lord speaks to another apostle another man of god and says ananias go and meet saul and uh, lay hands on him for he is blind and he says god are you sure you want me to go and and uh, you know lay hands on this man if he's blind it's good for us amen for he has persecuted many in the body of christ in the church and the lord says go for he prays he's praying and i have to tell him 
how he is going to be used for he, i have great plans with him so ananias goes and ananias prays over this man and as soon as his eyesight returns you know what paul does saul does paul does he starts preaching hallelujah he starts come on don't whisper you can be confident he starts preaching, preaching. and as he starts preaching and word goes around people start getting afraid he is now coming to jerusalem okay and as he is coming to jerusalem people out there the christians out there are scared and they say we don't want to have anything to do with this man <coughs> are you with me we don't want to have anything to do with this jesus this uh, this paul because we believe that he is going to turn around figure out who's who in this church and then come and persecute everybody and when he says when this is the rumor that is going around about Saul you know what this is what you read verse 26 and when Saul had come to Jerusalem he tried to join the disciples but they were all afraid and did not believe that he was a disciple of Jesus but Barnabas took him and brought him to the apostles and declared to them how he had seen the Lord on the road and he had spoken to him and how he had preached boldly at Damascus in the name of Jesus. So he was with them at Jerusalem, coming in and going out. Who stood up for Saul? He would have still been a tent maker. Nobody would have given a damn about this person some rambling pastor standing on the roadside and preaching who cares amen but there was a man barnabas who was willing to take the risk who was willing to say it's okay i will stand for this man because i see god in him i see god upon him I see gold on this man and therefore I want to stand and support the ministry that God has put in his life. And so because he did that, when you glance around people, you know, you know, I want to ask us again out of this story, when we look around and we see young talents, when we see someone younger who is moving forward in the things of God, how do we respond? How do we respond in our offices when we see a younger child, uh, uh, a younger talent or a younger kid who's got immense potential? Do we stand up like a Barnabas? Do we stand and encourage? Do we stand and support? Do we say, I'm willing to take the risk in the, in the temple of Jerusalem where uh, James is, you know, leading that church, Jesus' brother. Can I stand and say, I support a Paul who persecuted Jesus' people. Am I making sense to you? Are you seeing this? The third story, I want to just show about the story of Barnabas. So Barnabas is a man who sees good in other people and encourages. He's a man who encourages God's people. He's a man, you know, there is a third story which is in Acts chapter 11 verse 22. Barnabas and Saul, they go to the church of Antioch. But unlike what we think, beloved, I want you to see this story. Barnabas and Saul at Antioch church, Acts chapter 11, verse 22. Acts chapter 11, it says, verse 22, the news of these things came to the ears of the church in Jerusalem. Let me tell you the background. See, till now, the church was only in Jerusalem. Few people here and there outside Jerusalem. But now, suddenly they get news that Antioch, another city, they have come to follow Christ. And when that news comes, they send Barnabas. Barnabas, go, find out. Are they really worshipping Jesus? Are they really serious about this call of God? Are they seriously, you know, following the way? And when, when, when Barnabas goes out there and these guys, they all start talking to him and he sees that they are all genuinely in faith. You know what he does, Barnabas does? Barnabas says, wait, 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 I'll get you a preacher. I'll get you a man who can teach you the ways of God. I'll get you a man who can explain the things of God. I don't need to be doing this because I will not be able to do this as well as this man. It's a new church. I can build it up. I can have my pastoral ministry going on. 
Hallelujah, my kingdom come, my will be done. No. It says, I'll get you the man who is anointed to do this business. Hallelujah. And he goes and he gets Saul. And he brings him to Antioch. And he starts backing Saul. As Saul stands there preaching the word of God. You see, if you look at the, book, the story of Paul and Barnabas, up till chapter 13, you will see that it was always Barnabas and Paul. After chapter 13, you will see it is Paul and Barnabas. You see, in, in, in those days, the name, order of the name had a lot of significance. Earlier, Barnabas was leading Saul. But later, it was Saul who took on the leadership. And Barnabas had no problem with that. Barnabas did not say, I will destroy his career. I will finish this man. I will start a rumor about him. Barnabas supported him. Barnabas allowed him to grow under his wings till he developed wings and could fly away. So much for us to learn out of this. I don't want to, you know, put those piercing questions and try to make it sound like a harsh word. But it's so much for us to think about. Acts chapter 13, verse 2 to 3. This is the first mission journey that they are heading out on. When they were worshipping the Lord with fasting and with praying, the Holy Spirit set apart, the Holy Spirit said, set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. Then after fasting and praying, they laid hands on them and they sent them off. You see, Paul and Barnabas, they went. They went across, they did a mission trip, they came back. On this mission trip, there was another man who came along. That's where I want to take this story. You know who was that man? His name was John. You will know him better as John Mark. The Gospel of Mark. Hallelujah. And this man, John Mark, went on that evangelical trip with Paul and Barnabas. But somewhere along the way, John Mark stops and he goes back. Amen. You see that, um, I'll give you that scripture in a while. It's in my notes. You see, and, and then when they come back, Barnabas again wants to take Mark and go with him on this journey. And Paul says, no, no, no. If he is quit once, we don't want quitters with us in the team. And that is where the two of them part ways. And then Paul, Barnabas goes with Mark and Paul goes with Silas and they do their own individual ministry. But again, I want you to see this, beloved, that even when it came to the life of a Mark, it was Barnabas who stood up for him. Are you with me? Barnabas stood up for Mark and said, that's fine if he quit once. Doesn't mean that he's going to quit for all his life. His heart is still for Jesus. Are you with me? Thike, he made a mistake. Thike, she fell. He fell into sin. He did this. He did that. We don't disqualify a person because of one sin. Because of one fault. Because of one, one limitation. What did Barnabas do? Barnabas said, let's take him along. Can I tell you something, beloved? Barnabas did not write a single book in the New Testament. But without Barnabas, we would not have the book in the New Testament. You know how many books the Apostle Paul wrote? 13 books. Your Bible would be 13 books less in the New Testament if it was not for Barnabas. If it was not for, you see, we, we give Paul the title of this evangelist who went across nations and preached Jesus. Who opened the door for him? Antioch was the first place where he went and he preached outside Jerusalem. Who opened that door? It was Barnabas. And I want to say, what if we become a people that encourage Everybody, not just TOP members. I mean, we need to have a vision that's bigger than TOP, beloved. 
what if we became a people that would encourage churches across the world men and women across the world stand up for others and say hey i see gold in you i see god's presence in your life i see a plan of god in your life and i want to say i am backing that plan of god with my thoughts words and my deeds it's very easy to do lip service and say wow god praise the lord i will be there for you at all times no if i say i will be there for you can i fund his first mission trip come on you're not talking to me now are you with me you know uh, zafan and i we were uh, last week we had gone off out of town to singapore to another church i was so taken in by the by the sheer magnitude of their vision the magnitude of their vision they are a church of more than 5000 people but here's the thing they support more than 128 churches across the world support and what is that support their support involves young talents from the local churches coming and staying with them and doing internship learning how to do church learn if is there a call of god in your life we want to support you is god calling you into ministry we will back you do you you want to go for missions we will send you we don't need the title we don't want top we don't want cornerstone we don't want names to come what do we want we want thy kingdom come we want to see your kingdom established in this place encouragement encourage us god's calling us to be a people that will intentionally encourage youngsters intentionally encourage people who feel like they have come to the end of the road who feel like there is nothing more left in me there is no more life left in me in terms of my ministry in terms of my life in terms of my you know my the call of god on my life i've missed the boat i've missed the bus whatever it is no god has a plan for each one of us and god's plans are not dependent on how you will receive it and how you will take it he will move forward the book of revelation says something so powerful he says see to it that nobody else takes the crown that is for you i see that as a pyar se bhara hua warning see to it that nobody else will take the crown that is for you why because if you don't wear the crown somebody else will take it if you don't encourage denzel somebody else will encourage him if you don't encourage ramneet somebody else will encourage him if you don't encourage there is god's got an army waiting it's for you and for me to decide do i want to be part of that army do i want to fall in line and be an encourager or do i want to be someone who is just thinking of i me myself me my family and my cat named sue i just wrote in my notes so i'm just going to share this with you you know at um, we were coming back and uh, you know the security you have to do that security before you board the flight <clears throat> just a thought um so i prepared zafan and i told him everything that you have in your pocket take it out and put it in the uh, in the tray so that you know you don't get stopped and you know and that place can be pretty intimidating and uh, so i go in first because both of us are standing in two sections and mine got over first so i go in first and i go and i'm cleared through and zafan goes in beep 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 and i turn and i look at him like they didn't say you can't carry the ear pods <laughs> so he takes off the ear pods has to go back puts it there and then comes stands again b b b b b and that lady who's checking zafan she's exasperated she's like what do you have what do you have? i have nothing i have nothing he's checking everywhere i have nothing so the guy who's frisking he calls zafan through and he starts frisking zafan and when he frisks zafan he sees a uh, you know the hotel cards <laughs> 
<laughs> they catch him with that and they say you can't go through with this go back put it in the tray and then walk through it you you know what i learned out of that is although then i was angry <laughs> what i learned out of that is that metal detector could detect the metal strip that was there even in that little card what if we become detectors that can detect the grace of god on somebody's life through their failures through the times that they have fallen through the the umpteen times that they have been an, an embarrassment to the church through all the ups and the downs and the backsliding and the front sliding and the backsliding and the front sliding what if we become a church that becomes a safe heaven or haven where they are allowed to fall where they are allowed to to fall and know that there is a safety net that will carry me that they will you see my 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 church will not put me down i can risk it because my church supports me that's what we must be or we can be a people that speaks discouragement into the lives of other people and so this morning i want to leave you with this thought that we become a people that will constantly constantly look for the gold that is in other people the book of hebrews said it very beautifully hebrews chapter 10 we preached on this earlier so i'm just going to keep it very brief hebrews chapter 10 verse 24 to 25 he says let us consider how we may spur one another towards love and good deeds not giving up the meeting of the saints or the fellowship of the saints as some are in the habit of doing some are in the habit of missing their church but encouraging one another are you with me encourage it was there then also they were busy with office they were busy with saturday night and they would miss <laughs> amen and i mean imagine if the bible says some are in the habit of doing it <laughs> back in the days but encouraging one another first thessalonians chapter 5 again you will see the same thing verse 11 he says encourage one another this is it's not a request jesus is not making a request to you beloved he's not saying please can you also consider encouraging your neighbor with me he's saying encourage one another which means it's my command it's my command who are you encouraging who are you being a barnabas to and who is your barnabas hallelujah when we become a people that will encourage amen god will see our faithfulness and lift us up amen